So you taught pottery when you were at the school, yeah. your dad did. Yeah. But did you teach it besides in the school? Did you do no. other classes outside? I did So not. really, a lot of this, because you say on the website, you know, we really for you, mm -hmm. we have a pretty large number of people yeah. who do this and yeah. love it, yeah. you know. So what do you... A lot of them started out in our classes. They started in the classes. They started in our high school classes. So that's where they started doing it. And so do you attribute that so, to the idea that there's so many people in the community that get into it? I think so. I think there's people that come from other places mm -hmm. that uh, do pottery where they came from. But there's a lot of people in youth that started out either in, in the high school classes or in the night school because we do have we have night school at the high school. Mm -hmm. You know, run through the school district and I taught that for about two years before I realized it was too much. Yeah. <laughs> teach all day, teach all teach night. All day and, all and, and then Greg Edlin started teaching that. The Are biggest the now? biggest thing we're doing for outreach is right now is empty bowls. Okay. Working with the food bank, making sure that that's successful. Mm -hmm. We have other plans to work with other entities. We haven't approached them yet, so I'm not really going to say what names, but right. um, you know, that we, we feel that our services can help their organizations. And that's kind of where we want to go with it. And there's enough need. It, yeah, there's, there's plenty of need in Butte. And Butte's such a good, good giving, giving community. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're kind of using that as art to do that. The other part of the outreach is my dad's a veteran, Vietnam veteran. He wants to have a veterans group up here where they're coming in and learning how to throw pots and so we're working with a few people from the veterans organizations right now trying to set that up so that's part of outreach uh, we have a art therapist that would like to do some classes up here and do that so art is a very calming centering right. place especially pottery um, and we want to be able to use it that way and then, so that's that's our big outreach, you know, for the mm -hmm. community, let alone doing the classes for uh, mm -hmm. potters and people that want to get interested in it and want to learn more. Right. And, yeah. and through this and through the, the classes and through what you're doing here in the outreach, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned encouraging creativity in the community. Yes. You know, encouraging. Can you talk about that a little bit? About, about I guess what my thought is... Raising the level the importance of, of art in the community. Yes, raising the level of art in the community. Uh, art has always been that last refuge for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, I, I laugh because when I was teaching art, you know, they asked me, why we got to do this? And then the other ones were out there just doing it because they loved it. Mm -hmm. And I said, because I want to educate you on art. Because if you don't want to do art in the future, that's great. But you might want to consume art. And there's a relationship between the artist and the consumer, mm -hmm. and that's very important too. And you need to know what's out there. You need to be, and they're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense because they do know what they like. Right. You know, whether it's paintings, drawings, pottery. And as these kids go off and become successful, then they become patrons of the art. You know, whether it be theater, whether it be, you know, three dimensional art, two dimensional art, whatever they're doing. Right. So that's. And there's a connection between yeah. the um, our humanness mm -hmm. and art. Mm -hmm. We can look at art. We can read a poem. We can listen to a song. We can look at pottery, and it will touch something in us. Yes, and it touches everybody different. It does. It's always been hard for me to, uh, to explain that connection. I recently mm -hmm. listened to the actor Ethan Hawke. Mm -hmm. He mentioned the importance. One, one way he explained it was, you know, nobody thinks about poetry or pottery or whatever most of the time. But then something will happen in their life, a crisis or something, and they'll hear a song and they'll read a poem and it, Connects. Connect. It touches them. It's it reaches into their mm -hmm. humanity, and I kind of think that's the same. Oh, it is. It art. is. It is. And it's creating art gives you an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, purchasing art, going and looking at art, and 
you know, mm -hmm. the gallery down the, the hallway here or, you know, a museum. Yeah. It's, 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 that's when you're starting to reach that other side. Yeah. Um, and getting away from the busy hustle of the, your days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a, uh, so do you I don't think know if I answered ever... that or not, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, isn't it hard to explain though? It's like you can it feel is. it, but it's hard to find the And that's probably the best words. thing. You feel it more than you, mm -hmm. you talk about it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So do you think you'll reach out to other areas of art? We are. Eventually. And that's, and that's why we didn't call ourselves the Hungry Hill Pottery. Mm -hmm. We called ourselves the Hungry Hill Art Center. Art Center for Art, Education, and mm -hmm. Outreach because we want to educate people. We want to be that place that the community can come to us and we can work on projects with them, and then we also want to produce the art. And so, and it, you know, I never taught just pottery. I taught all levels in all areas. Did you? And, and same with my dad. I, this, this is just one that we centered on for, mm -hmm. you know, becoming that important to us. Yeah. But, and important to a lot of people, but there's a lot of people that are looking forward to having a studio to draw in, a studio to paint in. We have a print lab upstairs that uh, they, they do mm -hmm. print making with a lot. And so those things, as we as we develop that warehouse behind here to become a complete center for art, yeah. I think it's gonna reach out to a whole lot more people. Yeah. Um, so that's why that's why we built our nonprofit to expand. You know, and there's other nonprofits in this building that we're working with, uh, the Phoenix Art Alliance. Mm -hmm. And places like that that we're also involved with. So it's a it's a community effort, and it's going to take the community to make that work. And you're in the baby, you're in the we're, baby we're steps, right? Baby you're steps. very new. We 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 think loftily, but we also have to think. Okay, what can we do this year? What can we do next? Our goal: get this pottery up and running. The next goal is to get the pottery into the warehouse. The third goal is to make that rest of the center. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other areas, printmaking, painting, a wood shop, metal shop, wow. stuff like that. Uh, glass blowing, hopefully, sooner than later. So, yeah. yeah. And, so, how soon do you think your classes will be starting? Do you have any? Uh, the first yet? class starts Thursday. Oh, it starts this Thursday. Yeah, and it's already full. And so, we stagger them. So, that Thursday class will go for 10 weeks. There's another class starting April 11th. Going to go for 10 weeks and then another class on April 17th. So they, they stagger, at least start, and then we're going to continue going year round with them. And, and uh, we'll be adding more classes all the time. So, can you walk through a little bit, um, Mike, what a, what a class is going to look like? You know, how you start? You know, what, what somebody <laughs> can expect? Or so are we they have, all different? So, we have several different teachers. Okay. So, um, that are very well-qualified potters in their own right and so they're going to be like first class is just going to be an all levels pottery class we just threw it out there heather woods and uh, sarah beagle are teaching it uh, they're going to have just 10 students so they'll have 10 students in here they'll start learning on the wheels from basic of what clay is all the way to firing it in the gas can. and uh, they'll it's it's just it's just a very basic level class, but we will have some potters that are in that class that know a little more, so they'll be able to take them a little bit further. But just from taking the clay, putting on the wheel, centering it, learning how to make shapes out of it, how to finish it, how to fire it, glaze it, then fire it again, the whole process. That's one class. There's another class, the second class is going to be all hand building. They won't ever be on the pottery. They're going to be using the slab roller and using okay. forms and I saw that you and, 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 yeah, and, sure and making texture. So, hand, so there's wheel throwing and then there's hand throwing. And they'll just be sculpting with their Yeah, they'll just be, yeah, be creating stuff that's not on the wheel. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so that'll start just right after Easter. And then, we'll, then I'm doing a pottery class. That one's being taught by Judy Andrews, and then I'll be teaching a class that's a basic pottery class. And as we go, 
as we start to develop these classes, we'll be able to do more advanced classes. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these classes will just be long, just learning how to throw. Sure. Then there'll be some classes where you want to learn how to make a teapot for the next three weeks. This class is going to be working on teapots. Oh, wow. Our big bowls, our vases, or you know, stuff like that. Our raccoon pottery. Like it's nice up. No, what is that? Raccoon pottery. And what is that? It's a whole different style of pottery. Oh, okay. It's a, um, I encourage you to look it up because there's some great information, but basically it's a different play. It's, it's fire. It gives you, when you glaze it, the rack part is glazing and you're glazing it very fast. You're glazing in some different glazes than what we're using. And then when you fire it, you fire it very fast and then you take it out and you put it in a bucket of sawdust or a bucket of grass and you get a lot of smoke in it which reduces those glazes and you get these metallic coppers and greens and reds. You know, they're not food safe, they're more for decoration. Yeah. Uh, horsehair pottery, same thing, you use that same raccoon clay. But then you take the pot out of the kiln, you set it there, and you take horsehair. We got that fly, didn't we? <laughs> okay, so we take the same clay, fire it in the raccoon kiln, take it out when it's at about 1800, 1900 degrees, and then you take the hair from the horse's tail, and you start to burn it onto the pot. And you get these nice little screwy lines, black lines, so you get this black on white or black on gold type potter. It's called horsehair potter. Wow. And so those are specialty classes that we'll get into as we build up our resume. So this is a pretty good field, actually. Yeah, yeah there's, one of my feet. there's so many things you can do in pottery. <laughs> That's it, great. You know, it, it really can expand and people can find their own way. Not everybody wants to do functional pottery. Mm -hmm. I, I'm considered a functional potter, so when I sit down with the wheel, I do bowls and cups and mugs, and plates, and platters, all the yarn vases, bowls. yarn bowls, all that kind of stuff. There's other potters that have become very sculptural in their pottery. You know, so. yeah. Rudy Audio is probably the most famous potter to ever come from here. And Rudy Audio does this beautiful vases. He passed away a few years ago, but he, he was over at the University of Montana. He was very instrumental with the Archie Bray, during the days of Archie Bray. So we're just carrying on a legacy that, you know, potters before us did. Yeah. And, and that's one thing about Hungry Hill. It's not about me. It's not about my dad, my family. It's a whole group of people that are putting this together and working on it and getting it to that's really important and really important to the community that it's a community that we're building. Sure, for sure. Do you have anything you'd like to add? I've gone through all my questions. Anything to add? Uh, just that the, you know, this is uh, it's a long time coming for a few for a group to get together. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think Orofino, or High Ore, excuse me, High Ore Pottery is one of the first uh, private potteries in view. There's been studio potters in view for a long time, including myself and my dad. But this is the first time, besides night school, that the school district puts on at the high school, that we have a place for community members to go and be potter. Yeah. You know, I've known a few people that have taught out of their studios before, but nothing that's ever become a non-profit mm -hmm. source for people to use. So, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You have, I did just think of something. You did mention earlier about how you got to, you know, you need to, to grow, you need to still generate the funds yes. and do that. So you need some kind of, so what type of fundraising or that kind of thing do you see yourself doing? Uh, what we're trying to do first is to get it established. Once we're established, have a year, or year and a half under our belt, show that we have accomplished empty goals, good recognition. and that we're here to stay. That's when we can start going and looking at bigger grants. And we really have to get an understanding of what we need in the building over there to 
figure out where we can do that capital fundraising that we need for that. Building. And so you know, the and the, one of the big things is uh, why we were able to do this is the have National House, National Affordable Housing Network. They own this building. Oh, okay. They own the warehouse, and they have allowed us to come in here and develop. 